What's up guys? It's Malachi. Today, I wanted to tell you about the worst job I've ever had. Now, I've had a pretty good amount of jobs, but this job ranks high in a way the most depressing, overworked, underappreciated, and undercompensated. I'm speaking, of course, about my job as a veterinary assistant, aka vet bitch. So, I worked at a veterinary hospital for about a year, and let me tell you that I have some stories about that place. There's a reason that veterinarians have one of the highest suicide rates of any profession. I'm not kidding. Look that up. Those people are some of the most overworked, stressed, and miserable people I have ever interacted with. Every single one of the head veterinarians that I spoke to worked about a 70-hour mandatory work week, and they were drowning in student loan debt. You have to really, really, really care about animals to go down that path. I also realized how dead these people were inside when I was casually folding laundry in the back kennels and one of the vets rolled a stray puppy into the kennel area with the puppy restrained on a stretcher. The dog could not have been more than six months old. I looked up from my laundry and asked what was wrong with the dog. Why was it here? You know, the typical questions. The doctor told me that it was a stray and since there was no owner, we were going to euthanize it. Okay, no big deal. I've seen plenty of euthanizings at this point, but this one was different. The doctor then pulled out a syringe and injected the dog while asking me about how my weekend was. No change in tonality or expression. It was like, whoa, did you just euthanize that dog right now? As I watched as the life quickly left the dog and it stopped struggling against its restraints. That was one of the most real moments of my entire life, watching this dog die. Not only that, but this vet euthanized this dog in the middle of a conversation in front of about six other dogs that were in their kennels, and those dogs fucking knew something was up. Think about why your pet is so afraid of going to the vet. It's a horrible, depressive place that reeks of death and disease. Oh yeah, and one of my responsibilities was also to dispose of the euthanized animals' bodies, which consists of throwing them in a garbage bag with an ID tag around their ankle and then putting that bag in a canvas body bag with another ID attached, and then carting this dead animal through the hospital to the basement where there are giant freezers filled with dead animals. Every assistant had to do this. This morbid task was part of the job description. Every week, some guy would come to the hospital in a van and inventory the bodies and throw them in his giant white van to go to the crematorium. Now, my other responsibilities as a VA were to make sure that all the surfaces were clean appropriately. The drawers were stocked, the emergency supplies were always ready to go, and to take care of and restrain the animals. This meant that as a dude, I was tasked with restraining super terrified dogs. Pit bulls? Check. German shepherds? You bet. Even something as routine and simple as a nail trim could result in these dogs thrashing around, injuring themselves, or ending up traumatized with a complex of future visits to the vet. I watched as a man brought in his super docile Rottweiler into one of the waiting rooms in order to get his dog's temperature taken and blood drawn. Simple enough. Nope, this dog flips the fuck out, starts growling at everybody out of nowhere. The veterinarian is fucking terrified. The man who brought the dog in doesn't know why his dog is freaking out. And let me tell you, I'm not the type of guy that is afraid of dogs, but that 100-pound Rottweiler growling and snarling when the doctor picked up the needle shook me a little bit. So, as customary, we tell the guy that he needs to muzzle his dog in order for us to proceed with the visit. He agrees, and we grab him a muzzle for his dog. The dog flips its shit again and starts snarling at the owner. The owner's fucking terrified and confused and cannot muzzle his own fucking dog. Now, this dog, according to the owner, is the sweetest, most loyal family dog imaginable at home. But when it comes to the vet, apparently a demon takes over. And you know what? I fucking believe him. Because... I've seen it happen so many times. The vet is not a friendly, fun vacation for dogs. It's an emotionless, robotic experience filled for them filled with drama, anxiety, and fear. Aside from those two examples, I routinely had to walk and restrain aggressive and unpredictable dogs. Shit was nuts. If a dog came in that had no previous records of being hostile or aggressive, then it was just a crapshoot. Well, I hope this guy doesn't bite me on our walk.
it was balanced out though because people would bring in their puppies to get them neutered and spayed and you could always bring the puppy into an empty room or run and play with it for a little bit not gonna lie that part of the job was awesome i got to play with puppies that were all over the spectrum chihuahuas labs hounds you name it one time I even got to go in a run with a litter of 12 puppies that all came in to get their ears cropped and they just pooped and peed everywhere they also bumped into shit with all those with their cones on their heads it was glorious so i would say that taking care of the dogs pretty much evened itself out it was miserable 95 percent of the time but in those moments where you got an affectionate dog or a room full of puppies to play with that was just amazing how the dogs that were staying for extended boardings eyes would light up when they got and they would go ballistic when you grab their leash to take them on the walk totally worth it cats however cats at the vet are a whole nother breed of terrible to start off i'm not a cat person never have been i do not see the appeal of cats and if you do cool you do you but i have never seen an animal as unpredictable or manic as a cat at the vet first of all there's about a 40% chance that even if your cat is the friendliest, cuddliest, most docile thing on the planet, once you stick it in a cage, all bets are off. Cats will bite and scratch the fuck out of you. It was our responsibility to weigh the cats every day and make sure that they had food and their litter boxes were clean. That was all that was required of cats that stay at the vet. They just hang out in their cages 23.7 out of 7 getting pissed off, and when it finally comes time to weigh them, or give them food or water, once that cage pops open, they're like missiles. Cats are fast, really, really fast, and they don't really telegraph what they're going to do. If a dog is mad at you, you can tell. You know, they growl and shit. But a cat can be happy-go-lucky being pet or, pet or held, and just flip the fuck out, biting and scratching willy-nilly. Like I said, unpredictable. So anyways, with cats that were deemed aggressive, we had fucking wrangling gloves. Think of the gloves that falcon trainers use to perch their birds. Yeah, those. Heavy-duty, thick-ass gloves that go all the way up to your armpit. And it was still scary as fuck grabbing a cornered cat with those things. They are the most wriggly, squirmy, angry things imaginable when you are trying to grab them. And when they get a chance, they don't bite the gloves. No siree, they know better. Like the raptors in Jurassic Park, they test for weakness. They bite where you aren't protected and claw where the fuck ever, because their legs go everywhere. Part of our training when we were restraining cats was that you will get clawed and bit. That will happen. Once you get clawed, stay calm and just wait for somebody to remove the paw from your arm. Whatever you do, do not unrestrain the cat. That is what they told us. That shit that we will get bitten and clawed by cats. What the fuck? Well, at least they warned us, I guess. Oh, I almost forgot. Every now and again, you will come across a cat that has ringworm or fleas or some other nasty shit, and then we as assistants had the privilege of washing these cats. I don't know if you know this, but cats do not like water, and putting them in a giant sink, essentially, while they are tethered to the wall and trying to wash them with chemicals is a recipe for disaster. I had to do this like once every two weeks. Shit was nuts. Yes, there were kittens that were brought into the vet, and yes, they were adorable when they would play together in an empty room, but these moments did not even scratch the surface of making up for how awful my experience with cats was. That could be like I said, because I'm a dog person. The last subsection of animals that I worked with, with was exotics. If you don't know what exotics was, that means basically everything besides cats and dogs that people have for pets. There was some weird shit in the exotics wing. We dealt with snakes, lizards, birds, ferrets, rodents, insects, you name it. Any weird unconventional shit that people like to have in the background, we treated. Now, I have way too many exotic stories to count, but the ones that stick out the most to me are the time Animal Control brought a bald eagle into the vet that had a broken wing that might need to be euthanized. I, of course, volunteered, because if you get to say you put down a bald eagle amidst a conversation, you win that conversation. Although the eagle didn't need to be put down, 
and we later sent it off to get rehabilitated at a related organization. That's the thing, though. People brought in wildlife all the fucking time to exotics. You know that shit that isn't domesticated at all? Yeah, people brought in birds, squirrels, rabbits, snakes, and they just left them at the vet. There would be a cardboard box that was rattling with an animal in it, and a brief description like, We think it's a bird, but it tried to bite us, so we thought we should leave it with you. And what do you know? It's a bird that's pissed off because it's in a new environment, and golly gee, it bites and scratches the fuck out of whoever touches it. If you find wildlife on the ground, don't fucking bring it into the vet, because all that happens is they euthanize it. Just leave it where you find it. Animals like crows and baby rabbits are completely fucked if they interact with a human at a young enough age. Baby, ra uh, baby rabbits' mothers will abandon their offspring if they smell like human, or were touched by a person, so leave those alone. Crows are even weirder, because they are a bonding bird, meaning that once they are handled by people, they forget how to survive in the wild. It's pretty nuts. So anyways, opening these boxes was pretty much like Christmas. If Christmas was something you dread more than anything, and every single present is out to mutilate you however it can when opened. Aside from the wildlife, there was the birds that people had for pets. And if you have a bird for a pet, fuck you. Why would you do that to yourself? They strut around and shit on everything. Yeah, some birds were fun and cute, and they hung out on your shoulder or would perch on things and talk to you, but the majority of birds suck. Yet again, every day I had to weigh the birds to make sure that they were eating enough and not losing too much weight. Some of the birds that I weighed would hide in their cages just to attack your hands when you reached in. Some would just randomly cling and peck the fuck out of you. Some would be okay, but you could never tell. There was these big-ass macaws that would come in, and their beaks could easily destroy walnuts. And yep, you guessed it, If we, we had to stick our hands in to weigh these suckers too. Some of those birds could take a finger off if they wanted to. Luckily, I never got bit by a macaw, but I did get bit by cockatoos. Every single fucking cockatoo that came in bit the shit out of me. I now have a complex when it comes to those white devil birds, and they fucking know that I'm scared of them. Yet again, I have to ask, why the fuck would you have a bird as a pet? The birds that could talk or sing were a lot of fun, don't get me wrong. Those same ones that talk and sing are the birds that scream if you don't give them enough attention. I'm talking blood-curdling, about-to-be-murdered screaming when all you're doing is ignoring them. They would also scream when you would trim their nails or clip their feathers. Oh, and did you know how fucking fragile birds are? Their hearts can just stop while in the midst of a routine grooming procedure because the stress was too high. So we would have to give them breaks during nail clippings to prolong the torture for everyone involved. So yeah, at this point, I hate birds. There, I said it. Then there was the last big portion of animals and exotics, the rodents. Rats, mice, bunnies, gerbils, shit like that. I'm lumping ferrets in with these because I don't fucking care about species classification. The owners of these creatures were the weirdest of all. I feel like a rodent is an in-between pet. Like you're too mature for a fish, but not quite there yet with a cat or a dog responsibility-wise. Now rabbits were a lot of fun. I had one rabbit that would hop along behind me as I was cleaning out its cage or folding laundry or something like that. Rabbits, I will admit, can be awesome pets. But yet again, like everything else, rabbits bite when they are stressed and pissed off. And rabbit bites hurt. A lot. Fortunately, I didn't get bitten enough by rabbits to have any lingering effects like my cockatoo PTSD. Like I said, the owners of rodents are fucking weird. There was this rat that came in with a tumor, and it was, I guess, the family pet or some shit. The rat was probably about four years old, and this family loved this thing. The tumor was malignant, and the vet told them that their rat was not going to make it. This didn't fly with the family, and they were all like, Do whatever you can, doctor, no matter the cost. Now, this is a reasonable request when it comes to a dog or a cat. I heard this a lot. People will plop down ten grand on emergency surgeries for their furry friend, and I would do the same. But a rat? A fucking rat? Anyways, the doctor tells them that we can do a small exploratory surgery, fight the infection with aggressive IV treatment, and continuously watch the rat, 
even uh, and even with all that, there is an 80% ch chance that the rat is still going to die. And to do all that, the cost would be about $2,000. Crying, the family says, go for it. So that's what we fucking do. Surgery, IV, try to remove the, t the tumor, and shocker, the rat dies. The family's furious that we were unable to save their rat and refused to pay the full amount. We end up settling on an $800 bill, and all of the extra work we did was completely negated. So there's the lesson as well. If you whine and complain, you can get discounts in life, even at the vet. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed my brief standout moments of when I worked at the vet. If you have any questions, feel free to ask, as there was so much that I didn't include. Also, feel free to subscribe and comment about any of your vet experiences, if you have any. Alright. Peace out.